In this video, I'm starting a series on the basics of broadcast radio from an engineering perspective. And I'm going to start with electromagnetic radiation. So you can think of electromagnetic radiation kind of like a wave. Frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional, which means that the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. And we measure frequency in Hertz with the international system of measurements uh, prefixes such as kilo, mega, giga, etc. You can also express frequency in wavelength. It's not used very often in the United States except in the amateur radio community. But the electromagnetic spectrum goes from DC to daylight and beyond as it's been so elegantly expressed to me. If we look at a chart of the electromagnetic spectrum, we can see that there's a lot going on in the lower frequencies. We have like power generation. And in the United States, power is generated at 60 Hertz. Um, there's low frequency radio, high frequency radio, broadcasting, microwave, so much more, the higher we go in frequency. Each section of the electromagnetic spectrum is allocated into bands. As I just mentioned, there's power generation, broadcasting, communications, radio astronomy, radar, satellite communications, so much more. But what we're really interested in is the frequencies from around 10 kilohertz to around six gigahertz. Because from 550 kilohertz to 1640 kilohertz is AM broadcasting, and from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz is FM broadcasting. Well, each of those bands are further broken down into channels. So when you hear a radio station give their frequency, it also has a corresponding channel. Uh, for example, a radio station that transmits on 107.9 megahertz is on channel 300. So the AM band has 117 channels spaced 10 kilohertz apart. The FM band has 100 channels spaced 200 kilohertz apart. So let me back up a moment and talk about allocations. Uh, that's the term for basically coordinating frequencies in certain geographical areas. Allocation is very important because RF does not follow political boundaries. A station that is only supposed to transmit to a specific city or area doesn't stop at the boundary of that area. Where it gets a little tricky is radio that bounces off the ionosphere or crosses international borders. We'll cover RF bouncing off the ionosphere in another video, but for international borders, the two nations have to come together with a special diplomatic committee in order to coordinate certain radio stations that have their coverage that goes over the border. The station that I had worked for previously, they had to be discussed by the US State Department and the Mexican equivalent of their State Department because the station's coverage crossed the border into Mexico, and a first adjacent channel in Mexico crossed the border into the United States. Both stations were properly licensed in their respective countries, but because of the nature of RF being more geographically bound rather than politically bound, it had to be coordinated between the two countries to minimize the interference to each station. But. If there are no cross-border issues that need to be addressed, we have to look at geographical issues. I'm gonna use Southern California as an example, since I'm pretty familiar with it. A station that transmits, say, from Mount Wilson will pretty much cover the entire Los Angeles metropolitan area. To make this a little more simple, RF travels in the straight line. So, line of sight from a transmitter site is important. That RF that is coming from Mount Wilson will continue to travel in a straight line until it hits a barrier. There will be some engineers who say, but Marcos, what about... Look, I'm just trying to keep this simple for this video. Yes, there are many variables, including weather. So that RF that's coming from Mount Wilson will begin to travel straight until it hits the Santa Ana Mountains, at which point it stops that means any cities or towns that are behind that barrier, like Temecula, cannot hear that station. So signals that cover a specific area need to be coordinated and licensed so they don't interfere with each other. 
This coordination and licensing aspect is handled by the Federal Communications Commission in the United States. And that is the topic of the next video, which is the FCC. So thank you for joining me for this series of Broadcast Engineering Basics. Uh, this whole series is gonna be put into a playlist for you to go through these topics at your leisure. Uh, more videos are gonna be added to the playlist as I go through more topics like FCC. All right, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video.